Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Let's start with the afternoon session. Please turn on the camera in all the time for this presentation. And we start with the next talk, the first talk, improving thermal stability of perovskite solar cell roof interface modification by lead sulfide quantum dots. Please, Evelyn. Okay, thank you. You could start, please. Okay. Please, all the participants, turn on your camera, please. Hello, uh, everyone. I Evelyn Betsabe Diaz Cruz, postdoctoral research at the Universidad Autónoma de Querétaro, and I am <clears throat> I am going uh, to introduce you the topic: uh, improving thermal stability of perovskite solar cells through interface modification by PBS quantum dots. The hybrid perovskite solar cells uh, have made significant progress in terms of power conversion efficiency over the last decade. The several instability of this device in the real operational condition is the major challenge for commercialization. It is well uh, known that metal halide perovskite solar cells uh, can degrade when exposed to moisture, oxygen, heat, light, mechanical stress, and reverse bias. It has been reported that uh, perovskite decomposes slowly at uh, 65 to 85 um, degrees Celsius, which is the temperature at which solar panels are typically exposed under environmental conditions and decomposes rapidly at 135 to 150 degrees Celsius, which is the high temperatures at which encapsulated solar cells are tested. Hence, uh, inhibiting the mobilization of iodide ions and maybe aim to prevent the phase change as we seen them in the figure. To achieve uh, the increasing uh, perovskite solar cell stability requires a deeper understanding of how perovskite devices degrade under various environments, uh, moisture, light, heat, oxygen, reverse bias, so electrochemical impedance spectroscopy is a very effective technique for analyzing charge uh, transfer and transport process in solar cells. In particular, electrochemical uh, impedance spectroscopy analysis of perovskite solar cells has uh, revealed a so wide range of uh, behaviors. In this work, um, we investigated the thermal stability of perovskite solar cells with and without uh, PBS quantum dots has an interface um, layer between perovskite films and spirometer using uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. Um, here, <coughs> First, uh, to use quantum dots in solar cells, must be use a binder with superior electrical properties. EDT was uh, employed in this case. Later, for the perovskite solar cell fabrication, we make a double carayon and perovskite by solution method. And finally, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy 
measurements were carried out under AM 1.5 illumination and with different forward bias using a potential stat biologic science instruments. The device uh, temperature was increasing from 38 to 100 degrees Celsius with hot air, while the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy day was taken at the same time. Here show the architecture of the two types of perovskite device explorer. A, the reference device, and B, device uh, with a PBS quantum dots interfacial layer between HTL and the perovskite layer. And we also have HRTM images of uh, perovskite PBS quantum dots to visualize the uh, perovskite metrics with embedded uh, quantum dots. The PBS quantum dots on perovskite material with size uh, ranging from 5 to 10 letter uh, nanometers are showed uh, the largest spacing of both uh, cubic PBS and perovskite are shown. From electrochemical impedance spectroscopy measure, we obtained a Nyquist plot and it showed two arc in both cases which can be represented by resistance and capacitance elements in an equivalent circuit. The first arc for the reference device is smaller at low voltage, minor uh, 0.4 volts, indicating a lower high frequency resistance and improved uh, charge extraction. However, when the temperature increases, it is observed that the size of the arc increases and consequently an increase in the charge extraction resistance is reached. However, if the um, temperature rise, the size of the first arc increases due to increased charge extraction resistance, suggesting a degradation. Although uh, the arc in the device with PBS quantum dots are greater at 38 and 16 degrees Celsius than in the reference device. When the device is heated to 100 degrees Celsius, the arc uh, diameter in the device with PBS quantum dots are smaller than in the reference device, indicating a lower charge extraction resistance and consequently a more efficient and stable charge carry collection. Uh, the equivalent circuit was used to feed the experimental electrochemical impedance spectroscopy day. And the circuit that peak in this figure was used to obtain good feed, where RS is a series resistance related to the contact resistance and the FTO resistance high frequency resistance and um, uh, capacitance high frequency describe high frequency behavior while RLF and CLF elements correlate to low frequency components. A constant phase element was used instead of an ideal capacitor to model. Uh, the low, <coughs> the low uh, frequency resistance in a device using PBS quantum dots, reduced as the temperature rise spatial in omega HT induced by the effects and impurities and the interface. Um, likewise, uh, this suggests that the reference device without PBS quantum dots degrades when exposed to um, temperatures beyond 100 degrees Celsius. In general, ion migration in a light perovskite file causes uh, device degradation. At highest temperatures, 85 degrees Celsius, iodide ions can diffuse into the spirometer. The diffuse uh, iodide ions prevent oxidation of the spirometer, 
and reducing its conductivity. Hence, uh, we propose that the interfacial layer of PBS quantum dots uh, incorporated between the perovskite layer and the spirometas acts a diffusion barrier for ions as well as for the charge extraction. This explains why the high frequency resistance in the device with PBS quantum dots is higher at low temperatures, 38 degrees Celsius, but lower at higher temperatures, 100 degrees Celsius, where the degradation is more drastic due to acceleration ion migration. As a result, the device containing the PBS quantum dots reducing ion migration, which is seen has significant reduction in high frequency resistance. Uh, here, uh, this figure shows the photovoltaic performance of the device under one sun illumination before and after hearing. The results show that the solar cell with PBS quantum dots outperforms the reference device, especially in terms of open circuit voltage resulting in a maximum power conversion efficiency of 13.42%. Previous research in quantum dots fields found a similar trend, which uh, was attributed to improved carry transport and lower sudban gap transistor assisted recombination, resulting in improved uh, charge collection in the device. In order to monitor the stability of perovskite solar cells as the temperature increases, we follow with the evolution of the photovoltaic performance after heating to 100 degrees Celsius. According to our funding, the perovskite PBS quantum dot solar cells maintained 94.3% of open circuit voltage, 84% of short circuit current and 74.7 percent of power conversion efficiency. In comparison, the photovoltaic parameters of the reference device uh, maintaining uh, to 98.7 percent of open circuit voltage, 62.8 percent of short circuit current and 55.5 percent of power conversion efficiency. As a result, as the temperature rise above uh, 100 degrees Celsius, the performance of the reference device begins to deteriorate more, and not sadly, which is most likely due to perovskite degradation by ion migration, as evidenced by electrochemical impedance spectroscopy results. And um, finally, uh, conclusion, uh, this study compared uh, two types of heritage uh, perovskite solar cells, one and without, one without and one with uh, PBS quantum dots interfacial layer incorporated between uh, perovskite films and the spirometas. Based on our funding, we concluded that the interfacial layer of PBS quantum dots can I in improving the thermal stability of perovskite solar cells, which can be degraded due to ion migration when exposed to high temperatures. Um, when the PBS quantum dot layer is incorporated over the perovskite layer, the monthly ions are trapped and prevent from uh, migrating, thus providing phase transition. This is reflected in the JV characteristic we showed that uh, after heated to 100 degrees Celsius, the device uh, with PBS quantum dots uh, maintains 74.70% of its power conversion efficiency, whereas the device without PBS quantum dots uh, loses more than 15% of its power conversion efficiency. Although there is still much work to be done with quantum dots to improve the stability of perovskite solar cells, uh, this research uh, sheds light on their role in preventing thermal uh, degradation.
thank you. Thanks, Dr. Evelyn. Questions? No? Okay, thanks, Dr. Evelyn, for your excellent presentation. Thank you. The next speaker is here now. Yes, Doctor, the next speaker is ready. Okay, thanks. Okay, the next presentation is, the title is Numerical Optimization of Materials Properties for High Efficiency Copper Indian Selenite Dim Film Solar Cell Using SCAPS 1D Simulator, please. Hi, hi, thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you see me in my presentation? Yes, now, yes. Okay. Let me make it bigger. Okay, now can I start? Yeah, please. Okay. Hi everyone. Today I'll be presenting my work, uh, my research work in CC International Conference here with the title of Numerical Optimization of uh, Optimization of Material Property for High Efficiency CIS Thin Film Solar Cells using scaps one d Simulator. So I will talk with these contents in this presentation. So the starting from the objectives. So the main objective is to study the CIESC thin film solar cell device performance using SCAPS 1D simulation. And also interpret the results, optimize the material parameter used in the CIESC thin film solar cells to obtain the high device performance. And finally, analyze the results, compare the Analyze and compare the results after replacing the experimental parameters of CIS and CDS, uh, replacing the to the optimized condition. Here in introduction, uh, as you know that uh, wafer-based crystalline silicon solar cell has dominated the PV market with a share of 85 percent due to its photovoltaic uh, due to its good photovoltaic properties and uh, uh, earth abundant uh, its earth abundance. So, although it is mature technology, it has indirect band gap and low absorption coefficient. Due to this, it is needed high quality and quantity of the material for absorbing uh, solar energy. So, because of that, it, the production cost of the, the solar cell is high. For the for industrialization, the, uh, the solar cell is uh, needed high efficiency and cheaper. So, the CISC and CIGSC, uh, chalcopyrite based thin film solar cells, have uh, attracted in the in solar cell in the PV market due to its uh, advantages of direct band gap, high absorption coefficient, very good stability, and high efficiency, record efficiency in thin film solar cells which is uh, like almost very like, uh, very few around two or three micrometer of the material can absorb the solar energy completely so as you know that the experimental work to op optimization process is very complex uh, time consuming and uh, costly so a better uh, we, we we need to have a like a systematic investigation to for the for the optimization process so here we are going to use numerical simulation can might be the best option uh, which is a theoretical model can help to interpret the physical phenomena and behaviors of the semiconductor device so why numerical simulations be, uh, the, there are three main reasons that we it will be helpful to use numerical simulation the first one is cheaper and quicker than experimental work and it is uh, it can also help to examine the or analyze the material semiconductor properties uh, that are difficult or impossible to measure experimentally. And finally, all the parameters in simulations are well controlled. 
So here in my, in my study, we are using is uh, is caps uh, one D simulation, which is a solar cell capacitance simulator, is based on one dimensional solar cells and a uh, window oriented program, user friendly and freely available to the research community. This is caps one D uh, originally developed uh, for optimizing uh, or for the modeling the copper indium selenide or copper indium gallium selenide CIGSC or the CDT thin film solar cells uh, developed in the University of Gent, Belgium. This uh, this uh, solar uh, this simulation can grade can be graded all the parameters such as thickness, band gap, uh, electron affinity, mobility, carrier concentration and also uh, defects or, or recombination profiles uh, in the solar cells. So this one can have the remarkable promise for designing and optimizing the solar cells. In experimental say, uh, details like CAIC thin flame, solar cell is deposited by hybrid deposition method followed by cellulization process. Uh, the first stage of hybrid deposition method involves the deposition of indium cellulite thin flames by spare pyrolysis technique and uh, co-evaporation of copper and selenium in the second stage and co-evaporation of indium and selenium in the third stage were uh, performed uh, in the co-evaporation method. And finally, after the completion of hybrid method, the film is selenized to, uh, to get the uniform composition of the elements uh, inside the film and also improve the grain size, which is really helpful for, for reducing the recombination centers. So in the selenization section, uh, we use uh, two, two, uh, two steps in license, uh, which is lower temperature of 300 degrees Celsius and higher temperature of 550 degrees Celsius. And for the CDS buffer layer, we, are, we use chemical bar division method. You can see in the figure left side. And here we have used temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, which is optimized and the deposition time is 20 minutes. In the simulation, SCAP simulation, in figure, we are seeing the CISC thin film solar cell structure, which is used in the SCAP simulator, which contains the CISC absorber layer, CDS buffer layer, zinc oxide uh, window layer, zinc oxide aluminum uh, transparent conducting oxide, and uh, we are having the left and uh, so back and front contact. In the simulation, we use a standard condition of uh, solar spectrum of AM 1.5G, that is 1000 watt per meter square, and ambient temperature of 300K. So this is the list of uh, parameters we use for each material. Like uh, we have a thickness, band gap, uh, affinity, um, mobility, carrier concentration. So here we normally focus on uh, thickness and carrier con concentration of the each material used in the CISC thin flame solar cell. So, uh, because uh, these two parameters can, are linked to understand the device cost as well as the efficiency. In result and discussions, uh, so starting from the experimental results, this is the results for the optimized results for CAIC thin flames deposited by hybrid deposition method, and we have performed the structural morphological morphological uh, and uh, optical and as well as electrical. We can see the f uh, from the results, it is observed that the CIS thin flames uh, is chalcopyric crystal structure and the grains are even uh, bigger grains. We can see from the figures here, C and D, they are from the CM and EFM. And the parameters we have optim uh, obtained for the optimized conditions is, in, is, is shown in the table. And uh, this is for the CDS thin films, optimized CDS thin films. Uh, we can, we, as I said before, that uh, it was optimized condition was 80 degrees for 20 minutes. And from the results, it is found that the CDS thin films is hexagonal crystal structure. The, all the, uh, all the uh, parameters is shown in the um, table below. So the main focus is in the SCAP simulation results. So I will start from here. The numerical is uh, first I, I started to work on the different CIS thin thickness while other, other parameters uh, remain constant. 
So uh, the thickness of the CIS thin film is uh, increased from one to 10 micrometer. And it's, it is observed that all the solar cell parameter uh, has enhanced, uh, enhanced because the because with the increase in the thickness, the photons, uh, photons, uh, more photons in the absorbed layer uh, uh, are collected, and also the photons having higher higher wavelength uh, can also uh, can also absorb in the thicker absorbed layer. In in low thickness, the uh, we are having the low performance that might be the due to the back contact combination because uh, with at low thickness the uh, space charge region and back contact is near and the chance and of the recommending the generated charge carrier is high so that's why the at low thickness of the uh, CIS thickness the mm, the performance reduces and then after uh, we started to work on the uh, CIS different carrier concentration of CIS -E, uh, we know that BOC, open circuit voltage, is directly re related to the uh, CIS carrier concentration, and it is seen that uh, when carrier concentration increased from 10 to the 14 to 10 to the 18, the BOC increased from four, from 439.3 to 696.4, and it observed that the maximum efficiency of 22.23% uh, at 5 and 10 to the power 16. So after, uh, with increasing from 5 to, uh, 10 to power 16 per centimeter to carrier concentration of CISC, the semiconducting property degrades and it changes into metallic conductive state, which enhance the recombination states or centers in the film and uh, degrade the performance after the uh, at higher value than 5 and 10 to power 16 per centimeter cube. Then they study uh, uh, work on CDS, different CDS thickness, uh, uh, and from it's like a, we focus on narrow, uh, very small thickness because the CDS thickness is normally we normally needed very low to prevent the, to prevent the or to pass the all the photon to the observer layer. So is the, here we are to, uh, we changed, we vary 20 nanometer to 100 nanometer, the efficiency is slightly increased. It might be the, with the increasing of this range, the quality of the CDS layers will increase and the performance is increased. But at very high thickness, this, the absorption of the photons uh, will be in this in this uh, CDS thin plane and blocks, to the, blocks the photons to reach uh, in the absorber layer and reduce the performance. But at very high, very low, very thin CDS thin plimps, it uh, contains uh, like uh, defects or pinholes, we can say uh, also uh, alternate path for the generated charge carrier and subsequently it impact on the series resistance and finally the field factor decreases and reduce the device performance. And we also worked on the similar CDS carrier concentration and here the VOC is decreased from 631 to 602 uh, well. Uh, the carrier concentration of the CDS is well, and the field factor increases greatly from 35 to 82.67, and finally increased the 9.83 to 22.81. So the increase in the carrier concentration uh, decreases the barrier potential of the junction, and which also uh, helps to uh, which are able to in, improve the device performance. And uh, it, as you know that it, it after 10 to the power 17 carrier concentration, the uh, device performance, the device performance is high and constant. So we have, what we have used for the CISC is higher, uh, higher at 5 and 10 to the power 16. So higher than uh, carrier concentration of CISC for the CDS, uh, CDS material, it uh, it will increases and becomes higher, which might be due to the extent, like a space charge region is uh, with increase in at higher value of the carrier concentration, the, uh, the space charge region extends to more to the absorber layer and maximize the collection of the generated charge carrier. And we also focus on the different thickness and carrier concentration of zinc oxide, and uh, here it is not uh, from like 
thickness changes varied from 10, 20 to 100 nanometer and carrier concentration 10 to power 14 to 10 to the power uh, 19. So 20. So we cannot, we are, we are not, we are not seeing any changes but with higher thickness of the zinc oxide can affect because it uh, it is a highly resistive material and it can um, uh, increase the cell resistance and finally affect the fill factor and as, as a result device performance will decrease and finally the study focused on the different zinc oxide and ammonium thickness and carrier concentration it is observed that uh, while increasing the Mm, thickness from thickness of zinc oxide, almond of zinc oxide from 50 nanometer to 350, the device slightly decreased. Even it is also confirmed for the, from the QV results that the left side we are having the recombination, uh, recombination of the uh, recombination of the general charge carrier increases with increasing thickness. So lower thickness is preferred for this material also. And while we cannot see like very significant changes uh, at different carrier concentration, but from the Q results, it is showed that uh, the recombination, uh, recombination of the generated car charge carrier increases uh, at lower carrier concentration. So it should be also be higher carrier concentration uh, than observed earlier. So finally, we optimize uh, optimize the uh, CI steam film solar cells uh, for getting high efficiency and as low, uh, like by consumption, of, uh, as low as possible materials, low thickness, I can say. So we are uh, achieved 22.81%, which is nearly to the experimental record efficiency for CI steam film solar cells, which, that is 22.9%. And these parameters can help to obtain the high efficiency because it is seems like this results is somehow resembles with the practical results. And after that, I mentioned that experimental results for CIS CDS, these parameters uh, replace to the optimized CS caps conditions. And it is observed around 20% uh, uh, efficiency, showing that the, the optimized conditions, what we observed from, the, uh, from our lab, can have also potential to obtain high efficiency. Finally, uh, in conclusion, uh, we have successfully, successfully uh, analyzed or optimized the CIS thin film solar cells from the SCAPS 1D and obtained 22.81% of efficiency. And after that, we replace the metal, metal parameter of CIS and CDS thin films to the optimized condition and observed 19.35%. So this uh, simulation can help to, uh, can provide an uh, idea or for, uh, for doing the practical work. So uh, at last, I would like to acknowledge uh, our MRU group, the SCAPS, uh, and CC, Sinvesta, Quenacid, CS group, uh, Biblioteca, uh, like, and uh, library, sorry, <laughs> and uh, professor from the CES, and. Uh, people from this says all the technicians who helped me indirectly, directly. And thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Doctor. Questions? You could ask or write in the chat your questions. We wait for one minute for questions. No question? Okay, thank you so much for your excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for providing, giving me a chance to present. Thanks. Okay. We have time, please two minutes in order to start with the follow presentation. Yeah, two minutes. I think Jesus Fernando Solis is ready. Okay, you ready, Fernando? 
¿Ya? Yes. Ok. Ok, the next presentation is double ETL in ITO free poly3 exil thiophene based organic solar cells. Please start, Fernando. Yeah. You could share your okay. screen, please. Good evening. I'm Jesus Fernando Solis Vivanco. I'm going to talk about double. Sorry, Fernando. To free poly I can see your presentation. Why? Your presentation you is no. Can you see now? No. Hi, Fernando. Are you using Windows or a MacBook? Windows. Windows, OK. Uh, you can see now? No, not yet. I think you have some internet uh, connection problems. Perhaps you can turn off currently your presentation, turn off your camera, and then turn off your presentation so we can see your presentation perhaps. No voy a venir ahora para acá. No voy a venir. Can you see the presentation now? Yes, yes no. it is visible. Okay. So, good evening. I'm Jesus Fernando Solis Vivanco. And I'm going to talk about double ETL in ETO free poly 3 exit based organic solar cells. The content of the presentation is introduction, methodology, results, and references. Why we need to work with organic cells? Well, uh, auto organic solar cells have been studied many years ago. In recent years, they have been of great interest as they are particularly promising due to the abundance of base material, low cost, and relatively easy chemical synthesis. It is the only cell technology that can fully address to challenge of large scale cell manufacturing. They have promising applications due to their electrical, optical, thermal and mechanical properties. And they can be flexible and light, so they can be used on windows. However, organic solar cells still have low efficiencies compared to inorganic cells. So research and development of this type of technology should be in further encouraged. In this world, 
the organic cell shown in figure one was proposed. And we can initially see a layer of fluorine tin oxide, which is less expensive and has great thermal stability over 350 degrees compared to indium tin oxide. This is beneficial because titanium oxide is deposited on it, which must be annealed at 550 degrees to reach the anatase phase. And subsequently, the PFN is deposited to obtain the double electron transport layer. This has the advantage of increasing the air stability of the cell, reducing the surface roughness and having a high transmission over 300 nanometers. And this allows the active layer of p 3 HTPCBM to be deposited since it has an absorption range of 300 nanometers to 650 nanometers. In addition, it is considered relatively low cost as well as relatively stability and scalability. After that, a whole transport layer of molybdenum trioxide is deposited, which can increase the lifetime and decrease the stability in the air. Finally, we deposit silver as a metallic contact, which is now to have good electrical properties. The methodology following was the, the following. Uh, first, substrates must be cleaned in ultrasonic bath using salt, acetone, and ethanol for 15 minutes each one. Uh, after that, the titanium dioxide solution was prepared and deposited in a spin coating to let it be an L at 550 degrees for one hour, obtaining a thickness of 17 nanometers. Following this, the PFN solution was prepared, deposited, and an L at 100 degrees for eight minutes, obtaining an approximate thickness of 10 nanometers. And then the active layer was made and deposited in a spin coating and an L at 100 degrees for eight minutes, obtaining a thickness of 250 nanometers. Subsequently, the molybdenum trioxide was deposited in a physical vapor deposit system, obtaining an approximated thickness of 10 nanometers. Finally, the silver was deposited using the same equipment, obtaining a thickness of 100 nanometers. In this part, figure two shows the same ener the energy level di diagram of organic solar cells constructed. It is observed that both titanium dioxide and PFM present ideal characteristics to be used in this structure. Since titanium dioxide has a conduction band of 4.2 electron volts, while PFM present a work function of 4.2 electron volts too. This allows proper transport of the negative charge carried from lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals called LUMO of the PCBM to the transparent conductive oxide. Also, in this part, there is no energetic difference between the PFN and the titanium dioxide interface. Continuing with the analysis, it is observed that the active layer shows a delta lumo, in this part, of 0.6 electron volt, this being enough energy to dissipate an exciton in an electron and hole pair. Furthermore, the difference between the highest of cupid molecular orbital, call it OMO, and the LUMO of the acertor polymer is equal to 1.3 electron volts, whose 
value is considered to represent the maximum theoretical open circuit voltage that a solar cell can reach with the with this active layer. Um, however, it can be verified that the maximum voltage in practice is really close to 0.6 electron volts. In this part, in figure three, we have the transmission spectra of the titanium dioxide, um, the PFM, and the combination of both layers, the titanium dioxide and the PFM. Figure, in this figure, titanium dioxide transmission starts around 300 nanometers and increase from 58% to over and 90 percent after 400 nanometers. Meanwhile, PFN, PFN transmission goes from 60 percent to 400 nanometers at 400 nanometers to over 97 at 450 nanometers. Also, PFN has an absorption range in in the range of 300 nanometers to 450 nanometers. In the titanium dioxide PFN layer, transmission spectra shows a change in the normal titanium dioxide transmission due to the strong influence of the PFN absorption in the range of 300 nanometers to 450 nanometers. In fact, the light absorption the light transmitted by the titanium dioxide layer is absorbed by the PPN layer, so the transmission in general decreased in contrast to the individual deposit of the layers. In figure four, we can see tau plot of titanium dioxide and the combination of titanium dioxide and PFN layers. Titanium dioxide shows a uh, Band gap of 3.23 electron volts, which is approximately the normal indirect band gap for this material. And in the second part, the second plot, we can see a fault correspond to the absorption range of the PFN. And after that, the slope corresponding to the titanium dioxide, which with which a band gap of 3.12 electron volts was calculated. In table one, um, figure five shows the results of the devices built. PFN and titanium dioxide show very similar similar energy conversion efficiency. We, find we have approximately 1.5 percent, and which is far exceed when both layers are combined in the same device obtaining around 4% in in both cases practically practically is 2.5 times more efficiency after use a double ETL due to its polymeric properties the PFN, PFN is in tune with the PCBM increasing the interfacial contact surface and having a very slow energy difference efficiently extracting the negative charcoal reefs and which is observed in the high open circuit voltage in this case for PFN. On the other hand, the titanium dioxide generates a good contact with the fluorine oxide when merging and reaching the anatase phase at 550 degree, degrees increasing the current density and the field factor with respect to the PFN. But by using both electron transport layers, the benefits found in this are added and electrons can flow more efficiently from the acceptor to the acceptor polymer, polymer to the transparent conductic oxide. In table two, we can see electrical properties of the best constructed cells 
against a typical organic solar cell that have that has the structure indium tin oxide p dot pss the active layer and with a metallic contact of aluminium in which case uh, shows a five percent of power conversion efficiency By conclusions, uh, UVB spectra shows the titanium dioxide layer decreases its band gap by using a PFN layer from 3.23 electron volts to 3.12 electron volts, reducing the energy required to transport the electron. Cells built with, the, with that structure show uh, good electrical properties while PFN, like ETL, managed to increase open circuit voltage, titanium dioxide has a considerable impact on short circuit current density and field factor. In addition, when using a double ETL composed of titanium dioxide and PFN, the benefits of both layers are complemented by increasing energy conversion efficiency almost 2.5 times compared to using only one of them. The vessel will has a configuration of fluorine tin oxide, titanium dioxide, PFM polymer, the active layer of P3HT PCBM, a, a whole transport layer of molybdenum trioxide, and silver as a metal contact. With a current density of 13, uh, open circuit voltage of 0 0.6 volts, a uh, field factor of 0 0.55, and a power conversion efficiency of 4.29%. These are the references using in this work. And thank you so much. If you have questions, thank you for me. Okay. Any questions? Some have questions? No. Okay, thanks, Fernando, for your presentation. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for your attention. The next presentation will be the title is Graphene for a Green Environmental Methodology with Organic Surfactants. Please, Bruno, you can start. Hi, Professor. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Bruno Renato Flores Hernandez. The title of the work is Graphene for a Green Environmental Methodology with organic surfactants. The research was directed by Professor Jose Santos Cruz. So um, before start, I want to show what are the topics that I'm gonna expose about the work. First, I'm gonna give a little introduction about what is graphene and some synthesis techniques. Then I'm gonna give more information about the methodology we follow for the project. And uh, finally, 
uh, the analysis for the results and the conclusions for the research. Okay, so first the introduction. Graphene was discovered by Konstantin Novoselov and Andrew Gain. Uh, they earned a Nobel Prize in 2010. Uh, in simple words, graphene is an allotropus of carbon consisting of a single layer of atoms arranged in two-dimensional honeycomb lattice. The greatest support of their work is the possibility of great 2D materials. Uh, since then, there has been a lot of development uh, of this area and other 2D materials has been discovered like borophen, antimonen, etc. The method they used for the discovery of graphene was pill exfoliation, but there are other synthesis methods for graphene. Um, the methods for graphene synthesis, synthesis can be divided into chemical and physical methods. Uh, the most common chemical process are graphene oxide reduction and chemical vapor deposition. On the other hand, the physical methods are peel exfoliation, uh, laser, sonication, and shear exfoliation. The focus of the research were conducted by sonication and shear exfoliation, both with similar techniques. Okay, uh, they work with the exfoliation process. In general, the process consists in the separation of graphite layers by shear exfoliation. This means that by the action of an uh, external agent like a liquid, the molecules of the material can be exfoliated in a single layer and remain separated because of static forces. The main advantage of the process is that it is possible to deposit in a surface and there is no external, uh, there is no ex external pollutant agent. One key factor for, for us in the process was the selection of a surfactant to reduce the surface tension of water because with the normal su surface tension of water, it is impossible to work. And if we have a lower surface tension, uh, it will be difficult to exfoliate the process. So we have to fit in the right uh, surface tension. And okay, sonication uh, was selected because the efficiency provided by the device, um, this method was used uh, mechanical waves but there is a disadvantage and it is because it is difficult to escalate. So the other similar method uh, was shear exfoliation with better characteristics. Shear exfoliation is a mature technique that has great scaling possibilities and is also accessible compared to other techniques, techniques reported. This is what Patton said in 2014. In this case, we designed a device uh, with rotational forces to test uh, the method of shear exfoliation. But uh, how did it work? Well, for the research, we tested several surfactants. One of the main parameters was environmental friendly, that, that the material, that the surfactant was environmental friendly, because if the process grows, the waste also grows. So. Uh, from all of the options, we select six detergents and it was also important to make a relation between the concentration in water and the surface tension. Then in a statistical analysis, the main variables, the, the main vari variables were achieved as it follows. Um, Okay, six detergents were selected. Three concentrations for each detergent also were tested. There was a comparison between the two processes, uh, shear exfoliation and sonication. In the case of, uh, for the case of shear exfoliation, two rotational speed were tested. Uh, 
11,000 RPM and 27,000 RPM. And uh, two frequencies for sonication were tested, 75% and 100%. Um, in this case, to name the samples, uh, the first number correspond to the detergent type, the second number is the level of concentration, and the third number is the level of speed or frequency. Now we can continue to the results. The first study uh, made was the to test graphene was Raman spectroscopy. So in this case, uh, figure one correspond to the best sonicated samples of every surfactant. And how do we know that these are the best? Or how do we know this sample is the best? Well, for graphene, there are three bands, the D band, the G band, the D band at uh, 1380, G band at 1620, and to D band at 2700. The relation between the intensity and the thickness of the D and the G band is related to the size and the number of impurities in graphene. The greater the thickness, more impurities there are, there are in, in the sample. And also the two band give us the special give us special information about the number of graphene layers stake. In this case, um, the sample 231, 232, 331 and 332 and 531 achieve a low number of layers, okay? For the next study, this was with uh, sonicated samples. For the next study, I mean, with sure exfoliation, we discard the number six, seven, four, one, because, um, in this case, if the sample give us a lack of graphene, uh, I mean, in, in shear, this effect could be worse. So for shear exfoliation samples, uh, the better performance in this case were with the number, the sample 531 and the sample 231. There was an analysis for the others in them, but these two were the main focus because of the relation between the D G band and the 2D band. Okay. In this case, uh, figure four represents a them analysis for shear exfoliated sample Two to one. In the left side, there are images for graphene sheets with an area greater than one micrometer square. In the right side, there is a diffraction pattern for the same sample. The main information here is that in the three graphs below, these ones, the two peaks inside, I mean these ones or these ones or D of the four, one, two, three, four, the number three and the number two and the number three. Uh, they would need they would need to be greater than the outsiders. I mean these need to be greater than this and this. Why? Well, according to Hernandez and research, the the number of layers is related with this uh, proportion. So in this case, uh, although there is uh, some uh, graphene sheets, they should be more than 10 stacked. This was for 231. So 
comparing to Raman spectroscopy, um, it is possible to say that if, even if in Raman spectroscopy we have some kind of information in them, there are they have we have more information, and also this is a better uh, relation to know what, how many uh, layers of uh, graphene we have in one sample. And in for in the other hand, we have the sample uh, five three one. The intensity of these peaks is quite uh, greater than the outside in this case. So according to Hernandez, uh, the relation presented is a, in this case, is a footprint of graphene, okay? And we also compare to the sum of the 10 images right here. And this is the main focus of, of, of this work. So, in conclusion, uh, it has been demonstrated that graphite can be exfoliated to give few layers of graphene using a simple methodology of rotating blade mixer reactor, I mean shear exfoliation. Moreover, sophisticated surfactant as uh, sodium chelate are not necessary to stabilize the exfoliated graphene. Commercial detergent works extremely well in this case, the number five. Also, it has been found that the concentration of exfoliated, exfoliated graphene increases linearly with time, resulting in a time-independent production rate. In addition, concentration of one milligrammer, milligrammers per milliliter were achieved. It was higher with rotor stator mixer that uh, what can be achieved with sonication. It is suggested that exfoliation is enabled by the locally high shear rates associated with high Reynolds number turbulence. With the results obtained, there is the prospect of manufacturing thin films of this material that allow it to be used in optoelectronic devices. It is suggested uh, this for, for this work. And uh, thanks for your attention. Any question or doubt, it will be nice to, to respond. Okay, thanks, Bruno. Questions? Okay, if not, thanks for your attention again. Thanks so much, Bruno. The next speaker is here, Luis Dorian Valencia. Luis Dorian, are you ready? Okay, thanks. The next title of the presentation is Numerical Study of the Recombination Profiles in Copper Indium Gallium Selenite Dim Films Solar Cells Truth Silvaco Atlas Simulator After Using Experimental Parameters. Please, Luis or share your presentation, please, and start. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Wait. Okay. Um, 
Hello, uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Dorian Valencia. Uh, I am a, a PhD student at the Instituto de Investigación e Innovación en Energías Renovables of the Universidad de Ciencias y Artes de Chiapas. Uh, I'm going to present you the work called the uh, Numerical Study of the Recombination Profiles in Six Thin Field Solar Cells Through a Silvaco Atlas Simulator after using experimental parameters. Okay, um, our conventional energy source uh, are in more critical condition every day to meet human needs, and in addition to the strong ecological impact that continues to depend of test fossil sources means. Uh, for this reason, uh, renewable energy, especially solar energy, is the more powerful option to uh, satisfy test needs without negatively impacting our ecosystems. Um, um, various generation are of PV technologies are found, among them silicon-based solar cells have been the dominating the, the PV market uh, for energy conversion but the fabrication cost of the silicon-based device is high, so new materials and technology are needed to reduce the, the device cost, and uh, the six-based thin-field solar cells can be promising in the PV market due to their long-term thermal stability, high absorption coefficient, high radiation hardness on electrons and holes, and high yield per weight and high record efficiency. And respectively, numerical simulation is a powerful tool in, in predicting the performance of, of system uh, or device. And in this study, study yes, we carried out an electrical simulation to electrical device with application for six thin field solar cells. Uh, this, this simulation was carried out in the Silvaco software in its Atlas model, uh, through which the interaction of semiconductor device is simulated under different conditions, uh, for example, lighting, polarization, currents, electric fields, etc. And in this software, we build our device declaring the regions and their geometry and parameters of the materials for each region and, and in addition to a discretization of the all elements uh, which allows you allows uh, to have numerical solution in the areas of the interest for the analysis as in the for example, as the in the union uh, of the semiconductors, semiconductors N and P, N and P. Um, in our study, um, the first thing we did uh, was generate a simulation model which obtained results similar uh, to those reported as record efficiency. All uh, the parameters used in this first uh, model were obtained from the, the consulted bibliography and several interactions were carried out in the parameters that handled some value margins uh, until we adjust our results on the record values. And, um, and in addition to the physical parameters of the materials, uh, that we obtain from the bibliography, uh, the Gaussian and Taylor state were also calculated as a function of the mass of the electron. And this is to obtain results that are closer to the real ones, and since other simulators optimize uh, test parameters to to easily easily converge in their simulation. Uh, okay. uh, after adjusting the parameters, uh, 
the result of uh, efficiencies uh, and uh, the short circuit voltage and core density and field factor and efficient are similar to the values report as record and um, which gives of the certainty of having obtained a simulate simulation model of the record device and regarding the recombination rate it increases strongly when the thickness of CDS increases and this round of recombination rate at the high thickness of the CDS buffer layer is mainly due to the increase in the surge resistance with the with the resin thickness of CDS and the recombination rate is is the six absorber layer remaining almost constant and lowered up to 0 0.35 micrometers uh, far from the junction and the uh, the recombination rate slightly start to energy when the charge current absorbs the distance more than 0 0.35 micrometer far from the junction. Uh, the rise is recombination far from the junction might be mm, due to the back suffice recombination. And uh, subsequently, uh, we deposit uh, of the absorbent layer 6 uh, through the process called three step irate and which consists of a field stage depositing indium, gallium, and selenium by, by sprite pyrolysis, and a second and third stage depositing copper and again indium, gallium, and selenium by cooperation to obtain the ideal proportion of materials uh, such as indio, indium and gallium. That this is uh, an important parameter that we determine the band gap uh, and obtain uh, the desired structure of material. And finally, a salination process is carried out to provide the treatment to the absorber layer. Uh, next, uh, a characterization of the absorber layer was carried out and um, profilometry to obtain the thickness that was 1.3 micrometers on average and X-ray diffraction to determine the structural properties of crystallinity and orientation which show a, a, a crystallinity structure of calcoporite and the electrical characterization uh, was obtained using the Hall method uh, with a magnetic field of 0 0.55 torr and, and the Raman and AFM analysis were performed and where the average roughness varied from 30 to 101 nanometers which indicates the percent of small and large grains of the surface and, and in addition to confirming the copyright structure for the absorbent layer. And the experimental parameters obtained uh, from the characterization of the absorbent layer uh, as well thickness, mobility, concentration, resistivity, and band gap. And they were substituted in, in the record efficiency model uh, that we had obtained at the beginning of the, of the study. Uh, the parameters were obtained from samples and deposited under three different substrates, temperature condition for deposition by spray pyrolysis and 300 20 and 330 and 340 degrees uh, Celsius. And 
the results uh, the JB cure for six thin field after replacing uh, the experimental properties. Uh, I can be observing how the performance of the device of the devices the change with experimental parameters than with theoretical parameters. And therefore included the experimental parameters of another layer should heap and and consistent interpretation of the performance of the device. Um, the recombination re, uh, the recombination curves for six after replacing the experimental parameters of the six are similar to to before begin and replace uh, the recombination rate increase with a greater thickness of the CDS buffer layer and the recombination rate was improved in the six absorbent layer after distance of 0 0.54 micrometers from the junction. Uh, the recombination rate was very high for the six 330 grads and Celsius sample. Demonstrating uh, uh, that samples that have a high gallium concentrate con uh, contain a high recombination rate. Uh, in the in the same way, uh, CBD deposit was carried of the of the CDS film and under different deposit condition either by varying uh, the deposit time or the temper temperature of the substance uh, to then perform the characterization of the layer of and obtain the parameters and to include them in our model. Uh, simulation and study the operation of the device when interacting the two layers of semiconductor uh, with experimental data. Uh, the thin film of CDS were deposited at a constant temperature of uh, 80 degrees Celsius and at different times. And the thin film of CDS were deposited at the temperature of the 80 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes showed better performance and than, other, than the others. And this high performance is due to the very low thickness of the CDS buffer layer and the efficiency of the of three different six square and and 40.65 and 40 um 50.33 and and 40.24 for six they feel that seated and 320 and 330 and 340 grad celsius respect respectively and the higher efficiency uh, for six 30 uh, 330 could be to could be due to the high band gap and high carry concentration than, than other, other samples. And the very, the very low combination rate at CDS layer was found showing and the CDS buffer layer is needed for better performance and, and the recombination rate was uh, and an it with increase in the distance from the junction until the recombination rate of 6 330 was increased uh, at a higher distance from the junction and 6 330 provides a better result because of the high quality of the material by studying these properties the simulation can guide to give it to the experimental works. And conclusion, 
And the Silvaco Atlas simulation was performed to optimize the six structure, uh, the, influence, the influence of various parameters such as thickness, band gap, carrier concentration, and electron affinity of each layer used uh, in six was studied and optimized of actually high performance. The efficiency of the optimized model for six was 21.92%. And the experimental results of the six and CDS team films were replaced at the optimized condition and device performance and recombination rate were strongly investigated. There was no variation in device performance after replacing the six experimental parameters only. And the efficiency of the six was drastically degraded to around uh, 15% indicating that the material parameters control the performance of the device and the rate of combination, uh, the rate of recombination increase normally is the thickness of the uh, CDS increase and, and the recombination rate is high in the six absorbent layer at the great, greater distance from the junction and by analyzing device performance and recombination rate and simulation can optimize material parameters for high performance and this study can provide information for practical work and thank, thanks for your attention and thanks for thanks to my university and, and to Simba staff for the facilities to carry out to experimental study in their laboratories and thanks to CONACYT and the entire group of collaborators who have supported me in, in this work. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Questions? No question, okay. Thanks so much for your presentation. And the next talk, will he, Citali Vasquez, is here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's Cesar Camas, the, present, the speaker. Okay, sorry. Okay, the next title is Molecular Dynamics Simulation for Copper Selenite Interaction for Copper Indium Gallium Selenite Solar cell growth process. Please go ahead for your presentation. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, thank you, uh, everyone, for attendance this presentation. My name is Cesar Camas. And I'm from the Instituto de Investigación e Innovación en Energías Renovables eh, that belongs to the Universidad de Ciencias y Artes de Chiapas. And in this occasion, um, I would like to present you the work uh, uh, titled Molecular Dynamic Simulation of Cooper Selenium Interactions for CIGS Solar Cells Growth Process. And for the purpose of this presentation, I divided into four uh, parts. First, a brief introduction to the investigation, then uh, I will explain the methodology used through, through this investigation, and, and, this, and then we, I, I, I'm going to discuss the results obtained, and finally I will give you the conclusions. So, As a brief introduction to this uh, to this investigation, we can um, well, let me start saying that uh, the thin field technology uh, it has demonstrated the capacity to produce solar cells uh, with higher efficiencies and to and also to 
uh, produce or, or uh, improve the properties of some materials. And uh, well, this is uh, compared to the those uh, solar cells based on uh, crystalline silicon. And well, uh, the thin field technology, as we know, uh, is based on uh, layers that is uh, that are, that are made for uh, several kind of uh, semiconductor materials. These semiconductor materials, uh, or among of all these semiconductor materials, we, we found the uh, Cooper, Indium, Gallium, Selenite, D-Selenite, uh, or also known as CIGS. And well, CIGS uh, has some uh, advantages as uh, other uh, partners are mentioned. Well, they just uh, mentioned the advantage of this absorption coefficient that is uh, very large between three to uh, six, 10 to the power of uh, unit per centimeter or an adjustable band gap, uh, the or, or according to the um, uh, this uh, more in, in indium or gallium indium molar fraction in the compound or um, an exterior stability among others uh, properties so this convert this material into a, a very effective uh, material a very uh, good candidate to uh, construct solar cells um, actually uh, well, in the current state of the of the art, we can find uh, high efficiency solar cells based on this material uh, that have around 24.3% uh, of efficiency. And we uh, study in, in two point of view this material, other materials too, uh, but this material we can study uh, through experimental processes or, or for a theoretical view, a point of view. And we, in, in this study, we decide to, to use a molecular dynamics approach that is a, a computational approach that consists in a study or, or analyze the evolution of a system or atomic or molecular system through or over the time uh, calculating the force and uh, calculating this force through mechanical or classical mechanical using the uh, Newton equations, uh, Newton's equation of motion. And uh, it means that uh, we can uh, reproduce a system that, have, uh, or that has these uh, properties uh, with uh, on, on knowing his positions of this uh, velocities, this initial position and its velocities, and then applying um, some uh, properties and some uh, calculations uh, from the interactions uh, between the atoms, and then uh, study how these uh, atoms uh, evolve through the time uh, with these uh, conditions. So we use this molecular dynamics approach for calculate uh, some of the, uh, or to reproduce uh, a growth process, uh, actually uh, a, a second stage process of a co-evaporation method. Um, so for this, uh, talking about the methodology, we use uh, some configura uh, configurations and, and tools for the analysis. The, configurations or the use of uh, open source codes for the development of the molecular dynamics. Uh, we use, in this occasion, LAMPs um, uh, to resolve this equation of motion. And uh, through LAMPs, we describe uh, into a scripts uh, the, the initial and structural configurations. And of course, we describe to the, thermodyna the thermodynamics uh, conditions and the output conditions. And all these models, uh, these simulation models that we uh, develop, uh, then we analyze it with uh, Obito. This is an open visualization tool. Uh, when we uh, analyze the creation of bones and other uh, uh, 
and we use other tools for analyze other uh, structure uh, issues uh, from these models that we uh, obtain. So um, the scripts are not the only uh, piece in this uh, in, in this molecular dynamics analysis or resolution. We need uh, two an interatomic potential, but uh, this interatomic potentials between Cooper and Selenium, uh, it is not. Uh, um, easy to found in the literature or um, in the repositories, official repositories, and um, for the elements that are of the same nature uh, uh, as Cooper, Cooper, this, this interaction between Cooper and Cooper and Selenium and Selenium, we use uh, interatomic potentials that are in official uh, repositories. Uh, we use a mean poten uh, potential uh, interatomic uh, file for the Cooper Cooper interactions and for uh, selenium selenium we use still in her Weber uh, uh, potential but for the uh, Cooper and selenium uh, interactions we don't have the uh, an interatomic potential and even more we don't have for the CIGS uh, structure we don't have uh, an interatomic potentials so how can we resolve this uh, part for the interaction of copper and selenium well, we use a potential that is known uh, that is known that as a Morse potential that in this slide is described in its mathematical and its graphical way. And uh, this potential has the uh, advantage that uh, is used for uh, the interaction uh, between the, at the atomic molecules and also is used for the interactions between metals metals uh, such as uh, the Cooper and uh, that is the reason why that we use this potential because it describes very well the interaction between this kind of um, uh, this kind of nature of these uh, elements and also uh, this potential could uh, could be used as an uh, interaction between uh, covalent bonds uh, between two atoms two or more atoms and then um, this potential is used also for the uh, or is widely used for the interaction in the interface of two different or uh, different metals so that was the reason or, or that were the reasons uh, uh, for use this morse potential uh, for the cooper and selenium uh, interactions um, simulation and then uh, we construct Based on uh, and on other uh, uh, on other uh, system geometries, we construct our our very uh, first uh, model with this uh, uh, with these values uh, in the x and y direction. We have uh, around uh, 50, uh, 54 Armstrong uh, of uh, dimension of. Uh, uh, and in the, uh, well, I, I have to say that we construct a slab and a bulk, a kind of buffer layer of Cooper with this, uh, uh, with these dimensions. And in, in the C duration, uh, we we use a 10 or around 10 Armstrong to construct the, the thickness of this slab. Um, uh, this slab was divided into into three regions. These regions correspond to the um, right uh, figure that I show in this slide. And we have in the bottom, in the blue bottom uh, region, a fixed layer to avoid the incident energy of the atoms or, or of the ad atoms. And the red middle thermal uh, region is a region that control the temperature uh, through a Nose Hoover uh, thermostat that is described in the script uh, as a NBT ensemble, and this uh, corresponds or this means that uh, the uh, number of atoms, the volume, and the temperature are considered uh, constants. And then in the, uh, the third uh, group of layers or group of atoms, uh, uh, the white atoms here. 
in the figure uh, are free atoms or Newtonian atoms that uh, consist in the uh, free interaction atoms between uh, selenium and, and Cooper atoms. So then we construct, um, or we uh, declare uh, into the scripts uh, boundary conditions. These boundary conditions uh, uh, permit that the in the y and x uh, directions, uh, uh, we uh, we declare these uh, periodic conditions in order to not uh, to not lose uh, atoms, and in the uh, direction uh, the interaction uh, direction uh, we uh, we declare these free boundary conditions uh, in order uh, to um, to do more to did more realistic these uh, models that we construct. So uh, um, finally, in this slide, I want to, to remark that this uh, blue light region in the top of the figure uh, represents the top of the uh, volume uh, of the simulation bots and um, where is released, or where were released the uh, selenium atoms at a ratio of uh, 3.28 Armstrong per picosecond. And then, um, well, as a result of, the, of all this uh, work, uh, we were right uh, some conditions, the two conditions that we were right, uh, the mainly uh, were right in this uh, investigation was, uh, were, sorry, the cutoff and the temperature. The cutoff, uh, we were right that uh, the, the radio cutoff that is, uh, as we can see in the left image, this radio uh, it represents the sun or the region or the area of influence of one atom around uh, the surround uh, of this atom. And, and this is a result of this uh, good of radio. So this interaction between, between this atom and the other atoms uh, into this uh, region, uh, region um, is described in this uh, in this value, and this good of radio was varying with, uh, from one to four uh, Armstrong, and then we varied also the temperature, and the temperature uh, was varying between uh, 325 uh, Kelvin, and uh, this and the and this temperature of uh, 550 Kelvin that correspond to the temperature slope of this uh, process of this stage. Um, well, uh, we construct uh, 24 uh, simulation uh, models, and for these models we have uh, some uh, some results that uh, we uh, share in this uh, in this slide. And as we can see in the uh, slide uh, or the figure uh, to the right, the right figure, um, if we were at the cutoff radio uh, from 1 to 2.2 Armstrong, uh, no matter what uh, temperature where we, do, we were using, um, uh, we found that uh, the selenium atoms uh, has uh, in the uh, interface between the uh, surface of this slab of Cooper's lab, uh, there has a weak interaction between them, or even uh, the incident uh, adaptive energy cross the bulk of this uh, slab. Uh, so we don't have good results between this uh, range of uh, good radio, good uh, good of radios. So uh, something similar, uh, some uh, similar, of course, when we arrive between 2.8 uh, to 4 uh, Armstrong, and even we obtain uh, a not good uh, results because uh, the, the majority of these models with these uh, values represent uh, a non-interaction between the atoms between uh, between the atoms of Cooper selenium. Um, uh, but when we were right in the middle of our, uh, this range of models, uh, I mean uh, the 2.3 to 2.8, uh, we found uh, better results as in the uh, C figure. 
and also the the, the best result uh, that we obtained is, was for 2.5 Armstrong uh, of cut off radio and a temperature of um, uh, 515 Kelvin and in this uh, in these models uh, we can uh, found or we found uh, uh, a better uh, stability in the models uh, over the time. Uh, we uh, found that this interaction between the uh, atoms of selenium and copper in the interface of the interaction uh, interface uh, was uh, was better than other models. And then uh, we uh, uh, we we do we did uh, sorry we did these uh, models uh, to evolve uh, in a period of time to uh, corresponding to uh, twenty thousand uh, time steps. Uh, so these better results uh, are also uh, or we can um, view all these results in the figure at the left uh, that is zooming and, and we can. Um, view this uh, a better interaction and a stable interaction between these atoms and this uh, um, we hope that we can reproduce this uh, optimize this model to obtain a um, uh, better result uh, with this uh, based on this uh, model with 2.5 Armstrong. And well, uh, as conclusions, uh, we developed a series of a series of simulation of Cooper selenium interactions process using a molecular dynamics method. Um, uh, as a first approximation, we use the hybrid overlay configuration to make possible the combination of these interatomic potentials between the same and different uh, nature. Copper, Cooper, selenium, selenium, and additionally, we specific, uh, specified uh, these conditions uh, for uh, the interaction between copper and selenium based on the Morse potential. And moreover, we vary the velocity that is uh, depending on the uh, temperature, uh, that is uh, this control temperature uh, that we that showed in uh, in the system geometry. And uh, we vary the cut off radius. We observed that uh, better results were achieved when the temperature was set at uh, 550 Kelvin and the cut off was around uh, 2.5 Armstrong. And these results are according with other theoretical results of Cooper selenium interaction. And we hope that uh, these uh, models uh, uh, will will uh, optimize these models for obtain better results than we. Uh, present here. And finally, well, here are uh, some references that use in this presentation and uh, over the paper uh, for this CCA, CC uh, edition. And well, finally, we will, uh, in, on behalf of the authors of this, um, of this uh, work, we would like to thank to the organizers of the, this CC uh, 2021 edition and also we want to thanks to CONACYT for partially support this investigation through the Frontier Science uh, 2019 um, with the project with this ID. Um, well and obviously uh, thank you for your attention. Questions? No? No question? Okay. Thanks so much. Okay, we appreciate your attendance of this session and I invite you to attendance to tomorrow, the, the conference. Arturo, do you want to add something? No, thank you very much, Dr. Jose Santos. Have a good afternoon to you all. Thanks so much. See you.